Hi, my name is David Rowlandson, and I currently serve as the Director of Bands and Assistant Professor of Music at Minot State University in Minot, North Dakota. Prior to my career shift into higher education, I was a public school band director in both Minnesota and Washington State. Hi, my name is Lana Heckel. I teach general music and band at Sydney Middle School here in Sydney, Montana. We're here today to tell you a little bit about a project that we've done over this past year that we've called a VPLC, or a Virtual Professional Learning Community. We gathered a small group of music teachers together to meet on Google Hangouts throughout the school year to support each other, to learn together, to share resources with each other, and ultimately to become stronger music teachers. I'd like to make sure to point out to everyone, this idea was born long before our worlds became consumed by all things virtual. So if you are feeling a little burned out about online meetings right now, please bear with us because we truly believe we have something that is extremely beneficial for all music teachers personally and in their careers. So we'll start by telling you the story about how this whole project first began. In 2017, I took a couple of master's classes at Minot State University from Dr. Rowlandson. And when we got to our critical issues in music education class, we made a list on the whiteboard of different issues that apply to music teachers across the nation. And we filled the whiteboard with that list. Um, we talked about things like voice change, retention, anything that applies to any facet of our music teaching lives. And the issue that I honed in on for my research during that class was isolation among music teachers. In my own personal experience, my first few years of teaching were a challenge, just like many other music teachers. I did have a support system, thank goodness for the Montana Mentorship Program. But even in moments when I was surrounded by other music teachers, I still felt reluctant to ask so many of the questions I had. There wasn't necessarily time set aside for those things, and young teachers don't want to be a bother to other teachers who are obviously busy with their own classrooms. Beyond that, in rural schools, there might be miles between one music teacher and the next. And when I began to do my research on isolation, I found out that it's maybe a more widespread problem than we realize among music teachers specifically. And we've all heard statistics about teachers leaving the profession, and I truly believe that those two issues are interconnected. I thought about ways we could do something about that and help each other out, and when I gave my final presentation at the end of this class for Dr. Rowlandson, he said he agreed, and if I were to ever want to collaborate on some project in the future where we attempted to make a difference in this area, that he'd be all for it. So that moment was really the first seed planted for a project that would grow into a VPLC. Early in 2019, leaders in the National Association for Music Education were making preparations for the Amplify 2020 Bringing the Future into Focus National Conference that was supposed to be held in early November of this year. As part of those preparations, NAFME made an early call for collaborative action research projects that would occur during the 2019-2020 school year, with the results being shared uh, at the November 2020 National Conference this year. NAFME leadership was interested in collaborative research between university faculty and pre-K-12 music educators. When I read the call for submissions, I contacted Lana and said this might be an opportunity for us to explore the mentorship uh, and professional development project that she described a few years earlier in my critical issues course. After a little discussion, we agreed and we moved forward with our project. Uh, we had to move forward with preparations, even though we wouldn't actually find out whether our proposal uh, would be accepted until after the school year started. So we committed to running our professional development project, regardless of whether or not our research proposal was accepted. Once we committed to doing this project, we had to decide on a format for this professional development. So we started researching professional development in music education and found a lot of interesting information uh, that kind of helped us narrow down what we wanted to do. We all know that music teaching is a highly specialized craft that takes years of refinement. Most music teachers, and even those who went to graduate school, 
are heavily reliant on professional development opportunities available outside of university degree programs to receive the continued training and knowledge they both need and desire. Professional development can take many forms in education settings, and those forms include district sanctioned in services, professional workshops, continuing education courses and summer classes, conferences, observations and feedback from administration, uh, mentorship programs, observing veteran music teachers in the classroom, networking and unscripted conversations with colleagues, online forums and social media groups, and even contest adjudications. Music educators are often critical of many of these available professional development opportunities because they find them ineffective in promoting true professional growth or fostering meaningful change in music teachers or music teaching practices, especially district or school-wide in-service sessions that rarely relate to the teaching and learning that occurs in music classrooms. What many music teachers are seeking is differentiated professional development that accounts for their varying needs, desires, and unique teaching situations, and also contains support structures for implementation into the classroom. Unfortunately, music-centric professional development typically involves significant time away from schools and requires teachers to fund their experiences, which can become expensive and even sometimes prohibitive. As a result, music teachers have started pursuing new professional development opportunities where they can communicate with other music teachers, interact with mentors and mentees, seek advice on specific problems, observe colleagues actively teaching in the field, learn over extended periods of time, and have opportunities to integrate what they learn into their teaching in classrooms through hands-on experiences. What we decided to do was create a PLC, a professional learning community, that specifically involved only music teachers. The label PLC has been used in recent years to describe a wide variety of education stakeholder groups. Regardless of the design of a PLC, the foundational principle that guides them is collaboration between teachers, exactly what we had in mind. Because collaboration and dialogue are the guide for PLCs, we believe this was the right way to move forward with our professional development and mentorship project. Additionally, when we looked at other research, we found out that PLCs have been proven to reduce music teacher frustrations with district or building-wide professional development by providing focused, content-specific learning opportunities, help both novice and veteran teachers feel less isolated as they build rapport and receive professional support from colleagues, result in increased teacher retention, because of the added support teachers receive, allow music teachers to brainstorm and exchange ideas, review teaching strategies and student performance, um, explore new approaches and methods of music teaching. And we found that some of the most effective growth in music specific PLCs has been linked to viewing videos of the group members in the classroom. So we were convinced that a music-focused PLC was the direction we wanted to go, but we had one major problem facing many music teachers in rural states, like Montana and North Dakota. When we teachers are often the only music teachers for miles around, meeting in person can be practically and logistically impossible. So we decided to use the various tools made available to our schools and establish a virtual PLC. Our PLC involves six participants ranging from 3 to 17 years of teaching experience, and we met twice a month over a seven month period. Each meeting lasted about an hour and we met 11 times total as a group. Our project was centered around something called CMP, Comprehensive Musicianship Through Performance. And you'll learn a little bit about that in a minute. Dr. Rowlandson served as the group facilitator, guiding activities, establishing goals for us, um, taking initiative to provide feedback on all of our work. The other four members of our group were all rural music teachers from Montana and North Dakota who taught a variety of courses. They have elementary music, high school choir, high school band, and everything in between. I served as a member of the VPLC, just like everyone else, and worked toward implementing CMP into my middle school band groups. At the end of every meeting, we agreed 
on a few things that we would make sure that we got done by the next meeting. Sometimes we would read about CMP and implement a CMP lesson into our classroom. We collected and uploaded samples of our student work and gave each other feedback on that. And we did videos of ourselves teaching and we would give each other feedback on that. Each meeting concluded with a chance for all of us to just visit and have sort of some non-structured shop talk time. When the whole experience was said and done, we looked back and found we had covered quite a list of topics over the course of our meeting. We talked about everything from classroom management, technology, composition, to guided listening, rehearsal pacing, and grading. These are all things we've picked up from various sources throughout our years of becoming highly effective music educators. Imagine if a group like this had been around to be your sounding board in your first years, to share stories, to remind you of things that you learned in college, to guide you toward your best practices. Some of the positive benefits of our VPLC group were teacher growth. We shared student work with each other and received valuable critique. It was also valuable to be the person giving feedback to others. It was a boost of confidence for ourselves because we realized we do have something to share. Another benefit was the effectiveness of doing this PLC virtually. Although we did sometimes have to overcome technical issues like a poor internet connection, we realized that truthfully, because this was internet-based, we were able to gather much more frequently and more easily than if we had attempted to join together in person. Personally, I believe that the most important thing we did was videoing ourselves in the classroom and sharing those videos with each other. Uh, not only was it beneficial, obviously, to let our peers critique us, but also getting to see them in their own classrooms was something we really could not have done in person. And it turned into an experience that really is unique to this VPLC setup. Another benefit, and this one is the one that means the most to me, was reducing professional isolation. We found that our VPLC did help to reduce feelings of isolation among these rural music teachers. Holding these regular meetings over an extended period of time really helped participants build relationships with each other um, and learn to rely on each other for a lot of different things related to our musical careers. Most of the group members did not know each other before this VPLC project began, and by the end of it, every member agreed that this experience was beneficial to his or her teaching. This is an excellent form of music teacher professional development. I'll share a couple quotes now on screen of two of our VPLC members. And I'd like to take this time to thank everyone who participated in our group this year, because we could not have done this without their input and their participation, their feedback and their friendship. These are people that you can rely on and are available for questions and kind of wanted to ask you questions. We're all teaching music and we can have those kind of discussions with people that are disciplined in our field and know things. Lana mentioned that we chose comprehensive musicianship through performance as the focus of our VPLC for a few reasons. Uh, previous researchers suggested that PLC meetings are most effective when they're focused on a central topic. Uh, we were both experienced and familiar with, with CMP and the positive impacts uh, that it has on large ensembles when used in the classroom. Using CMP to, to guide our program, uh, basically there was an established framework that we could use to guide um, our, our exploration and learning. For those who are unfamiliar with the Comprehensive Musicianship Through Performance, or CMP model of instruction in large ensembles. Put most simply, CMP is a thoughtful approach to planning large ensemble instruction that engages students in holistic music learning. That is music learning that contains more depth and meaning than simply performing the correct notes and rhythms. For those who are interested in learning more about CMP, I suggest checking out a book written by Dr. Laura Sinberg uh, from the University of Minnesota. And that book is titled Just Good Teaching, Comprehensive Musicianship Through Performance, or CMP, in Theory and Practice. Uh, it's a very short and user-friendly guide to implementing CMP into large ensembles. We chose CMP because we both believed in what it offers to students and teachers, and, and we knew that it was 
uh, probably going to be new to, to some teachers uh, seeking more out of their, their classroom instruction. Uh, but it, it didn't have to be CMP. It could have been uh, a variety of other topics. You know, some, some possible other topics maybe could have been assessment, um, technology, classroom management, conducting. Uh, you know, we happen to choose CMP, but it doesn't mean that, uh, that it had to be CMP. Kind of wrapping up here, uh, researchers have documented that the most effective collaborative professional development uh, for, for music teachers is musical, uh, is sustained over long periods of time, allows teachers to participate voluntarily, shouldn't be forced in other words, uh, it builds on the group's collective wisdom. It includes multiple opportunities for teachers to reflect. It provides site-specific support for teachers, and it allows for mentor-mentee relationships, uh, collegial relationships, and uh, peer connections to develop. With that said, I have good news for you. We found that a well-crafted VPLC meets all of the criteria I just outlined on the previous slide for effective professional development. Even better news for those who are intrigued by VPLCs. This professional development is available to every music teacher. All you need is a computer and internet access, video conferencing capabilities. Uh, most, most of you now have some experience with, with something, whether it's Google Hangout, Zoom, or Microsoft Office. Um, given uh, the recent push uh, to online teaching. You would also need a small group of teachers, probably as, as, as few as three, maybe two, uh, three would probably be better, with similar teaching interests, similar teaching discipline, um, and, and a similar desire to learn and grow and become better teachers. Finally, uh, you'd need an openness to be vulnerable and share your teaching and your students' work with other colleagues. And remember, you're sharing this with the sole aim of providing high quality music instruction to your students. Because we had success in our first go at a VPLC, we'd like to invite other teachers to join us in the next round. We have a sign up sheet or a Google form that you can fill out if you're interested in joining a small group. We're going to mix veteran teachers with brand new teachers so that people who have all types of experience can feed off of each other and share tips and we might have a band director group and have a general music group and separate off so everybody's pretty specific to their content. For those interested in forming a VPLC, we would like to leave you with a few recommendations and considerations for your future work. First, it's beneficial to identify, nominate, or appoint a group facilitator to help guide activities, organize meetings, and send out reminders to group members. The facilitator could lead activities for an extended period of time, or the facilitator role could rotate among members of the group. Second, meetings really should occur semi-frequently, maybe every week or every other week at the very most. This would allow work and growth to continue Longer periods of time between meetings can create longer periods of inactivity. Remember, the most effective professional development is ongoing and embedded in the work we do in our classrooms. So longer periods uh, in between meetings can let us get bogged down in our busy schedules uh, and then send us scrambling at the very end to complete whatever is needed for a PLC meeting. And the ultimate result is that whatever activities we do are, are less meaningful and, and less intentional. Third. A central focus or topic really helps to guide the professional development in PLCs. The focus or topic can change over time and can include a countless number of music teaching related topics. What is most critical is that PLCs choose a focus to guide their work. Finally, remember PLCs were originally designed to and are most effective when teachers actively share, discuss, and evaluate the work we do in, in our classrooms. And that's both teachers' work and students' work. Sharing wisdom and engaging in, in shop talk uh, 
can be an important part of VPLC time. It certainly was during our, our VPLC this past year. But the most meaningful and effective growth comes from evaluating student work and watching each other work in the classroom. This can be the spark that ignites focused discussion in VPLCs. So we would just like to say thank you for attending our presentation today. We hope that this was a useful way to spend your time today. And we hope you'll spread the word and let other teachers know that they can join up with one of our VPLCs and have some professional development that lasts them through the whole school year. Have a great day.